Hello friends, Clage back with a pretty interesting video here today. I want to share some very interesting and potentially very powerful tech that has been going around on Twitter today. And I think it's going to be something that can really elevate Anji as a threat with the power of Midare. Uh, you can consider this a follow-up video to me gushing about Midare with the Season 3 changes demonstration because this involves Midare, surprise, but this is this is strong. Uh, I was messing with this today and, and I want to share it with everyone because I want as many Anji players as possible to start messing with this to see just how effective it can be and how to possibly make it easier to execute and I'll get into the details on that in a minute. So let's just talk about Midare for a second, having now played with it for a few days and seeing it in action all that. Do I still think Midare is the hype machine that I, I talked it up about in the Season 3 demonstration? And for the most part, yes, I do. Uh, Midare has been a welcome new tool in the arsenal for Anji. It's so much nicer punishing stuff like jump-ins with Auto Guard, punishing lighter moves with Auto Guard getting a knockdown, getting to put a butterfly or do a meaty or start strike throw on people just for getting auto guarded for basically anything. The only things I've found that Midari has some slight weaknesses to characters with really amazing range normals uh, Ramlethal comes to mind. You can auto guard them at tip range which is where they're going to want to be because that's how they you know make their money. That's how they, they execute their best game plan. Sometimes Midari is just not going to reach, and that feels very bad. If Midari does manage to whiff, you're, you're in trouble. It has a lot of recovery. You're not going to look too good. The other thing is, shortly after I did the Season 3 demonstration, there was a universal answer to Midari that was hashed out and labbed out by the community, and that is to do a fast PRC backdash. If you can input it quickly enough and do it right, you'll backdash Midari, it'll go right through you, and then you get a free punish. This does require having PRC in the first place, and we all know PRC has always been a problem for Auto Guard. This is still a way better outcome of forcing them to use than everyone just PRCing the spin and then waiting you out. It, because while it is a universal answer to Midare, if you see your opponent with 50% and you Auto Guard them, you can just choose to not do Midare and let the spin end and try and do a throw or something else. And then if they PRC and you don't commit to Midare, well, they just wasted 50% meter and you go back to neutral. That's still a net gain for us, so that's important. But this new tech that has been going around today might just make that aspect irrelevant. This is going to be very powerful. It's going to take me a minute to explain, so stick with me. I do want to point out, I did not discover this tech personally. Uh, as far as I know, this was first shared on Twitter by a player called OG Chewy Snickers. So shout outs to them. I don't know if this was first posted in the Anji Discord or something, and then they were the first to share it, but they were the one getting the, the information out and about, and that particular tweet was linked to me by my buddy T5, uh, big Plus R player, one of the big innovators of Cliff and Plus R, and just genuine, genuine good person. Uh, T5, T5's always down to share information, so they brought this to me, and now I want to pass it all on to you now that I've messed with it for a few hours tonight. So... Let's get into what this new tech is and why it's so important and why I think it's going to be worth your time to learn. So, back in Season 2, if you'll recall, they added this small, weird buff that didn't have a ton of application, but definitely saw some uses of creativity, and that was the ability to Kara cancel special moves into Overdrive. So, like, we got the ability to do, like, Fujin into, like, Kacho Fugets, right? If I can do it today. My hands are very tired, I'm not going to lie to you. This. We can, we can Kara cancel a special move into Overdrives. That was a thing added way back in Season 2. I even remember discussing that uh, when I did the Season 2 demonstration. So why is that important all the way now in Season 3? Well, what is Midare? Midare is a special move. So does that mean we can Kara cancel Midare? Yes, we can Kara cancel Midare into our Overdrives. Now, why would you want to do that? Well... The first thing is, if you Kara cancel Midare into Iseogi, this is a universal answer to the PRC backdash uh, option that people have against getting auto guarded. Because if they PRC backdash and Iseogi is out, they lose. They're going to fall into Iseogi and take the full damage, and we get a hard knockdown. So let me show you what this looks like. So I actually have the virtual stick up. 
how the Kara cancel things works. And if you don't understand what I mean by Kara canceling, uh, it's the same concept as these. The the empty cancel of Fujin, not letting Fujin resolve, but throwing fan needles or hopping or doing read. These are commonly referred to as Kara cancels because it's it's loosely translates to empty canceling. It's canceling into another move without letting the first move actually get to its active frames is is the easiest way to explain it. So that's why these are called Kara cancels. But if we auto guard do Midari, we can actually do Midari into Isayogi. Isayogi, of course, is 632146 heavy slash or half circle back forward heavy slash, depending on which input you prefer for nomenclature. So to do this, in theory, you need to have the startup of Midari happen in auto guard. You do quarter circle back punch, and then you need to go into the Isayogi motion. Let me tell you up front, do not try to learn this by doing quarter circle back punch and then doing the full Isayogi motion. That is wasted effort. There is a shortcut for this. And it's very simple. When you do Midari out of your auto guard, you're going to do half circle back punch instead of quarter circle back. And then you can just go to forward and hit heavy slash. The timing on this is wonky because you can input Midari very early. So if we just do an auto guard, see how early I did the quarter circle forward and how long it takes for Midari to actually start up? You can't Kara cancel Midari until these, these startup frames happen. Like, it has to be starting its actual animation. Otherwise, you're just going to whiff the Kara cancel and you're going to get nothing to whiff but Midari. That's not a bad outcome. We get Midari, we get a knockdown. That's good. So, how this works is auto guard, half circle back punch to activate Midari. As soon as Midari's startup frames happen, press forward and heavy slash. There's a lot of ways to do this. The way I have found I, I that is the most consistent for me is to wait a while to actually do the input to, for Midare and then just roll my finger from heavy from punch to heavy slash. So, allow me to show. A little early. A little late. There we go. That is a guaranteed punish on an auto guard. You saw Soul just did a jab. I tested this on Chip. I tested this on the three-frame jabs. You will get Isayogi to hit guaranteed if you do this input and they auto-guarded and they don't have PRC. If they PRC and they backdash because they're going to try and do the universal Midare punish, they'll lose. They'll backdash right into Isayogi and as soon as the iframes run out, they get hit. If they backdash and just... Or if they PRC and just block, they could potentially punish this, but... The, the end game of this new tech is going to deter that, and you'll see why in a second. But So this is layer one. This is very good. This, this is a universal answer to the PRC backdash situation. And getting hard knockdown, not bad. I'm not going to say this is ideal to do mid-screen or anywhere not near the corner, because we do get hard knockdown, but we're all the way over here. This is not where we want to be as Andy players. We don't want to be way out of far S range. That's, that's not our place to be. If we're close to the corner and do this, this is great. Because if we're anywhere near the corner, we're going to get a wall break, a hard knockdown off the wall break, and more damage. Not a bad deal for someone auto guard getting auto-guarded literally anything, any button, even their jabs. So, this is pretty good. This is a, this is a powerful tool. But, the next step is the true big one. The, the real powerhouse of what this has. So, we know that we can do these Kara cancels, right? We can do this kind of thing. Well, what's the other thing you can do with supers, right? You can fast RC these. You can PRC these and do them for minimal meter. Because it's a PRC, it's a fast PRC. So if I go in and I set my gauge to just do, um, not auto regenerate, and I Kara cancel Isayogi, that's only 50%. And that I got the forward. If I do a button immediately, we save some of the meter because that's how that works in this current patch. That only costs me 40% meter to PRC Kara cancel Isayogi. That's pretty good, right? Well, what if I told you now if you can do this tech, this, this, and I'm not going to lie to you, this is hard. This is going to take practice. But if you can do both Kara cancels back to back, Kara cancel Midari into Isayogi. And fast PRC Issei Ogi before it starts up and takes the 50% meter during the cinematic. We can punish jabs. Yes, jabs that are auto-guarded with close S, which is our best starter by far. So, 
rather than try and show you this through my own hands a billion times, I went ahead and pre-recorded this because I don't want to spend 20 minutes of video wasting your time for you to try and see how this works. So this is what this looks like in motion. You're going to hear my stick because I forgot to turn my mic off when I recorded this, so bear with me. I'm also going to uh, mute Strive real quick so you don't get a cacophony of awful echo here. So... Seems pretty good, right? So let's let's uh, watch this again. PRC go into our full combo. We're near the wall, so we get wall bounces and we get a full wall break. So let me show you what this looks like frame by frame, so you can kind of see more importantly how this works. So let's go about here. So I'm gonna frame by frame this. So the auto guard happens. Soul jabs. Auto guard happens. I wait a little bit. And we do half circle back. Punch. Don't mind the up. That's just my sloppy execution. You all know I have sloppy execution. This is not news. Forward. Heavy slash. Immediate Roman cancel. So now we've PRC'd. Soul is still, still doing the jab. And that's a punish. I tested this to make sure this is a true punish. I have the dummy holding back the entire time after they do this jab. So if if we do not do this fast enough, they will block. I actually have done it where I didn't get the fast PRC and was very slow with it. And then they get, get to block. But if you can do this all at once, this entire quick motion, you get to punish an auto-guarded jab for 200 plus damage. If you're near the wall and take the wall break. Something else important here. Watch what I break the wall with. I use Wild Assault. This is universal. I just want to touch on it really quick. I'm going to make a, a Wild Assault guide here soon. But Wild Assault is now quite possibly the best option for wall breaks. Because watch Soul. That's hard knockdown. Wild Assault is in fact hard knockdown on a wall break. Which means now you don't have to spin meter if you want to get a hard knockdown on a wall break. And that's really good. That is very, very important for us because breaking the wall with Anji can kind of feel bad sometimes, right? Because we don't particularly want to reset back to round start, but if we have a hard knockdown, that makes that feel a lot less bad. A lot less bad. But, especially with the damage nerf to Iseogi, spending 50% and sacrificing stuff like our Roman cancels, that doesn't feel very good. Roman cancels are still the most powerful tool in all of Guilty Gear. They're, they're amazing. The versatility is beyond crazy. Wild Assault also has a lot of versatility, but it's not as much versatility as a Roman Cancel has. So being able to have a different way to get hard knockdown on a wall break is big. That's, that's very good. Start routing your wall breaks with Wild Assault if you have the burst to spare, because when you wall break, you get positive bonus, means your burst is going to come back faster, and you're going to save your meter. It's very good. Highly recommended. All right, so I showed you how this looks in motion. When we Kara cancel both moves and we get this this juicy close ash punish because we auto guarded a jab, that's a big deal. So let's talk about the caveats to this new tech, right? Uh, like I said, this is hard. This is not an easy input. The windows to hit those Kara cancels are small, and there's one real big issue with this entire thing, and that is that our super input has overlap, right? Isayogi is half circle back forward heavy slash. Kacho Fugets is half circle back forward slash. Guess which button gets priority in this game? Yeah, it's slash. Why is that a problem? Well, one, you can in fact Kara cancel into Kacho Fugets. We can do that. It doesn't serve a lot of purpose because even if they PRC and backdash, they're going to see us standing in Kacho Fugets. And they're not going to swing. They're just going to run up and throw us. And then we get punished. And that feels bad because we wasted 50% meter. But the more important thing is you can fast PRC Iseogi. If I can fucking do it today. There we go. You can you can fast cancel PRC Iseogi and not lose 100% meter. Because Iseogi does not take meter until the cinematic starts. It's not considered active yet because it hasn't reached its active frames. Kacho Fugets, on the other hand, is frame one. It's active the very first frame it becomes becomes a move. So if you PRC this, 
you're losing everything. Even if you fast PRC, you're using 85% of your meter. So if you don't have 100% bar, you're not even going to be able to attempt this for one. So that's not great. But two, you don't want to lose that extra meter. The whole point of this is that if you do this tech right, and you get a wall break at the end of it, you're going to end up spending less than 25% of a bar because you're going to build back the meter and you're going to get positive bonus. So it basically replaces itself. So the overlap on Kachofu Guts with Issei Aogi is what makes this really hard because if you go in, Kara cancel Midare, and you happen to hit your buttons too quick like you do Heavy Slash and then you try to Roman cancel, if you hit Slash too early, you're just going to get Kachofu Guts. And that messes up all the calculus. That is the worst possible mistake you can make with this. But one of the reasons I think this tech is super viable is a lot of times with these high execution, crazy cancel kind of techs that act as like built-in option selects or built-in better damage for doing some rough execution. Usually the problem is, is if you fail the execution, it's a big problem. Like you either end up punish or you end up wasting a ton of meter or resources and that doesn't feel good this is kind of almost foolproof because let's go through all the things you could get if you don't do this tech properly right so let, let's just say you do this and you don't get the car canceled all you just happen to get me dare oh no i did me dare and i got a knockdown and i get to put a butterfly on them darn that's too bad excellent we're for, we're perfectly fine with that what if you mess up your Roman cancel and accidentally RC Madare? Okay, sure. Sounds good. I still get to do this. Cool. Fine. No problem. Spent some 50% meter. If we get to the wall, break the wall, we're going to make that right back. Fine. No problem. That's not a bad execution error. We still get to, to confirm that into big damage. That's perfectly okay. If we only get the Isayogi. If I can do it again. This is fine. This is probably one of the least desirable outcomes unless we're near the corner. Because again, we go to this spacing on the screen. Which doesn't feel great. But it's still a punish of a jab with well over 100 damage and a hard knockdown. There are worse places to be in life. The big, the big bufu is to accidentally get Kachu forgets and do the PRC. Because you're probably not going to get the punish and you're going to waste a lot of meters. So... See how much meter I wasted? Because I buffed the input. That's that's the big that's the big loser. If if you fail it, that's gonna hurt. So there's one really bad outcome, but even if you do that, we're not gonna get punished. We're not going to get slapped for mistaking that input and losing 100% meter. Losing 100% meter hurts. Meter's precious. I say this all the time in videos. But we don't just die for it. Even if they PRC and backdash. They're not going to punish us because we've just canceled out a PRC. We're not getting punished. We might even catch them on the, the loss of iframes at the back of their backdash if we're close enough. So there is basically no execution error for attempting this where you just out and out have to get, you know, smacked around for it. That, that doesn't really exist. So this has very, very high reward if you can get the absolute best result, which is that Kara canceled, Iseogi, fast PRC, close S starter. That's a massive reward. The other rewards are still heavily skewed in our favor when it comes to risk reward of doing this. And many of them cover the universal answer to Midare in beating out PRC backdash. So, this is really powerful tech. Really, really, really powerful tech. But it's going to take practice and a lot of practice. You're, you're really going to have to work on getting this to function. I am still struggling to get it remotely consistently. Um, but I think it's worth the effort. My hands are also shot because I've been playing for three hours. And I've been testing this a lot. And doing this kind of rapid input over and over again is... Even if I was still in my 20s, my hands would be mad at me right now. So don't, don't sweat my slop too much. But... I think this is worth investing time into. I think this is worth looking into and trying to get something out of. And like I said, if you wanna if you wanna get the base of this, just practice doing the car cancel of Midare into Isayogi. Don't even worry about the RC to start. Just work on getting this part. If you can do this, if you can get this part down, you can figure out the timing for the, the fast PRC and doing the close S as you go. 
but doing that shortcut I talked about, half circle back, punch, forward heavy. Like, that is, that is the key. Don't try to do these inputs naturally. Don't try to do all of the Midari input, then all of the Isayogi input. That is a lot of extra steps. That's just going to make it harder. It's going to make it less consistent. There are, there are a lot of ways to shortcut this. One way I found is you can do half circle back and hold punch if you buffer it really early. And then try to time the activation of Midari and just go forward. If you hold back and then push forward, the buffer considers that input stored. So if you do this and then go to forward with the way the Kara cancel works, you're going to get the you're going to get the Isayogi out. I personally am finding more success with just trying to do this as one nice felt swoop thing. You're gonna have to experiment, depending on what kind of controller you use how much hand speed and dexterity you have and just your general sense of timing just mess with this go into training mode and get a feel for it F figure out what works for you because even if i put a hand cam on my stick that's not going to be worthwhile information to you this is going to be one of those things you really have to feel out for yourself but if this becomes something we can do consistently in match the threat of turning any auto guarded move into a full possible 50% punish for less than probably a quarter of a bar of meter, that's very strong. That is a gigantic threat. And it makes this, which is already way better as we've established, Auto Guard is so much more threatening of a tool now. That turns it into an Omega threat where the risk reward is so skewed in Anji's favor that there is no reason to not try and abuse the, this Kara cancel mechanic. But, again, this is not something you're going to pick up and with five minutes of practice suddenly be doing in matches. This is a complicated input. I'm not going to lie to you. But I do think it's a manageable input. I think this is something you can train yourself to do in match. And, like I said, if we can, that's big. That's, that, that ups the power of Midari so much to have that much versatility behind it. Us really good. And the cherry on top is that it answers the big problem in PRC backdash. And that's only a problem if they have meter. If you see they don't have 50%, you don't even have to worry about it. If all you want to do is take your Midare, get your knockdown, and put a butterfly on them, go for it. That's perfectly okay. So, that pretty much covers it for this new tech. There might be some more stuff that evolves from this. But after messing with it, I think this is pretty much the gambit of what you can possibly do with it. And again, the the risk of an execution failure is so low in terms of like you getting a poor result that I think this is absolutely worth your time. So take a look, mess with it, see if it's something you can implement into your game plan. But this this is a big find. This is a huge piece of tech. It's not going to be easy. It ups the execution requirement for Anji quite a bit. But I'm I'm impressed. I'm I'm stoked that this has been found. Now just as a, a real quick thing, if you can't do this or this is too hard or this level of execution is just not for you, don't feel like you have to be able to do this play Anji. I don't think that's required at all. This is very high level, like earning yourself a little bit more percentage points of advantage over your opponent as you get better and better. Don't feel like this should be the first thing you practice. If you're just learning Anji, you should not be worrying about this kind of tech. You should be learning how to use your buttons, how to use the charge, how to use Midare, and how to play his fundamental game first. But for those of you that have been playing the character for a while, and you want a piece of very strong tech to mess with, this is it. Highly recommend it. So, that's going to do it for this one. Let me know what you think of this. Let me know how much difficulty you are or are not having if you found any input shortcuts or or little visual or audio cues that help make it easier for you definitely post those up let me know what you think and yeah let's see what we can do with this i think i think this has got some some real potential behind it so i'll be messing with it in the coming days so that's all i got thank you again for all the support the huge amount of views uh the subs the likes comments if you want to keep doing that it definitely helps me out Again, if you want to check out the Patreon or come to my come by my Twitch channel when I'm streaming, that would also be super appreciated. But as always, everything I do is always going to be free. If you just want to watch and don't have any extra change thrown around, no big deal. I totally understand. So, as always, thank you so much, friends. That's all I got. Uh, be safe, be good to each other, and I'll have some more match vids and some guides coming in the coming week. So, peace for now.